My name is Jonathan Parks, and welcome to Jonathan's Nature Craft. I must inform you that I do not live in this house by myself, but live here with other people. Sometimes other members of the household may have to walk through areas where I might be recording with other family members on the phone. If you hear any noise like that, please feel free to disregard. We are doing our best to get noise-canceling equipment, which may at least keep you from hearing exactly what is being said. Thank you for considering. Well, this was my little moment that I decided to come back on, tell you all a little bit more about the coming forth, and I'll kind of mention at the same time that it's kind of a shame we couldn't be back out on the porch today to do it, but I'd say it's kind of hot outside right now, and we're supposed to have thunderstorms later today, so we don't really know what each little day is going to bring as we go, so... I'm kind of back here in my regular corner again, and as you probably noticed before, I've put this little comforter over the couch because, you know, things just fall between these cushions here, and, you know, this couch is kind of built in a way where you have to move everything out of the way in front of it and move the couch forward to get behind it to get stuff out that falls back there, so a lot of trouble a lot of work don't really care to fool with it all the time so kind of getting back to doing a little bit of this again and while we're doing it we're going to kind of carve some pieces of genuine mahogany we did african mahogany the last time but this time we've kind of got the genuine mahogany to work with and i'll tell you all a little difference is, is that you know genuine mahogany is real mahogany that comes from south america while african mahogany is not really mahogany, it's just a wood that comes from Africa that kind of gets its name because it kind of looks similar to mahogany. I mean, it's, there's kind of a difference because African mahogany kind of <coughs> is a little softer and carves more easier, as they say, at the woodcraft store. So that's kind of why I've tried the different things. But I do want to come back on and tell you all a little bit more about the coming forth and things we do. One thing I often do is watch the Capitol Fourth on PBS. I don't really go out places to watch the fireworks or anything like that. Sometimes I might just, you know, watch them in my own neighborhood or something <coughs> if I get the chance. and. I'll tell you about a certain year when my parents went out of town to Ohio to stay with some family members that were there and just, you know, and of course that was a year when the 4th was on a Sunday and I mean this year the 4th is on a Thursday but in years when it is on, on a Sunday they usually have, they would usually have the downtown parade on the 3rd which would be a Saturday because you know, I mean, when they, even though nowadays they don't have the parade and the fireworks downtown anymore, they have it at a place called Kroger Field that is kind of out there where the UK football team plays football and stuff like that. It used to be called Commonwealth Stadium, but I don't like to go out in that crowd, so I don't really go out and do that. And... I'd say for all the ways it's kind of been in life and all those years and all those ways, I say there was a year they were out of town, so the the Capital Fourth wouldn't have been on until that fourth, which was on that Sunday, so I'd say if anything there was for me to do it was to just walk through the neighborhood on the third and look at all the fireworks through the neighborhood, so that was kind of what I did, and would also just like to mention that if you ever get to watch the Capitol Fourth on the Fourth, which is on PBS, I'm I'm sure that wherever you are, your local PBS station has it. That is, if you're in the United States, maybe, and you might be able to get it online from any part of the world if it so interests you. 
but I'd say that it's the kind of thing that we're going to watch when it's on the TV. That's what I always like to do and kind of, you know, see the fireworks at the end. They get celebrities to come on and do little performances, little talks. I do want to kind of mention some things I learned about patriotism as a kid in church when my mom used to teach the children's church and of course there were things we learned about some of our patriotic songs and some of the old tunes they were based on. We know that our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, was based on an old English drinking song or an old English bar song. Whichever way you want to put it, that's what it was the tune to, to that matter. They put it to that tune, and I also know that our song America, or My Country Tis of Thee, is based on the old English hymn, God Save the Queen, which is still the national anthem in England, as far as I'm concerned, or as far as what I think I've seen, and so... That's kind of how that has been for us in this world, and there's so much more I'd like to say and to share that we shall kind of know over time, and one thing she also told us in particular was that when a certain lady wrote America the Beautiful, that she was on an airplane and saw all the mountains and stuff, and kind of wrote the poem based on what she saw and put the tune to an old hymn. My mother didn't know at the time what the old hymn was, but more recently I did a Google search and saw that the hymn was, Oh Mother Dear Jerusalem. So that was a little place where I learned some of that from. And I mean, you know, it's like some of these hymns, I'd say there were ways they kind of sang them in churches hundreds of years ago, but little different ways we have of doing it now, they kind of change over time, and I'd say yes for how that little hymn was concerned, I'd say that, you know, it was just about all the toils and sorrows we have here on earth, and makes reference to heaven as Jerusalem, because the Bible says that heaven is the New Jerusalem and kind of the hymn, it talks about how we long for heaven and to long to be in the New Jerusalem where we won't be facing all the toils and sorrows that we do here on the earth. And I say for just little words that come to us. That was something I sort of wanted to say today about the old hymn. And we also know that I kind of did a little research today. And in Church as Kids, she taught us about Roger Williams because we grew up in Baptist churches. And the church we were in was a Baptist church as well. And the fact that Roger Williams was one who came to America from England, started the first Baptist church in America, which was called Providence Baptist Church, and it was in Providence, Rhode Island. That was kind of where he started the community there, and I say, I say that there's so much about patriotism these days, and patriotic songs, patriotic hymns, and I'd say among ones we kind of sang in my church were America the Beautiful and the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and I'd say that they were all just little meaningful hymns, meaningful songs, and it's kind of like how in that song, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, originally written as like a army song there was a line in there that says about Christ as he died to make men holy let us die to make men free now the words kind of changed a little bit when we sang that in a school chorus that I used to be in in high school where every year we would sing that at the graduation and 
our, our conductor kind of changed the words to, as he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free. Because it was kind of a moment where, for the moment it was, we kind of had a little bit of a different kind of a time when we sort of wanted to celebrate the fact that people were kind of going through a new stage in life, moving on from school, moving on to college or work or adulthood or whatever it was going to be. So was kind of why we changed the words a little bit. But I say, I say that there's been different songs about it to come over the years and we know even in country music there was that song Martina McBride came out with that was called Independence Day and we know that there was even that movie Independence Day that Will Smith starred in. We know there's just a lot of things they say throughout the world and throughout music and stuff that kind of teaches us little things and sometimes just sometimes you know movies like Independence Day we even watch around Christmas to that matter I didn't really watch those movies much I didn't care to sit down and watch them with everybody but most everybody just played them and kind of did I say I say I say kind of strange here and there you know world is just a crazy little place we live in for all we don't know and do and say and I'll tell y'all you know it was a time when we became independent from King George because there were early settlers Puritans and stuff and Protestants who came from England and had a revolutionary war that set us free from King George of England and I say, I say that things have just been our world since then, and these days we got to be happy that we live in a free country. There's countries out there that don't have freedom of speech, they don't have freedom of religion, they don't have things that we have here there's people out in those other countries who would really love to hear about Jesus and here in America that is something we take for granted and I think about the times when I was at a certain church that was one where a certain minister there was wanting us all to save Sunday school books so he could kind of send them to people in Africa where they'd love to hear about Jesus and where we kind of took it for granted here. But of all little things I say, little different languages that were spoke, sometimes that's all the more reason why people went to language school to learn the things I say. And I say not only did people hear die to make us free but they died so we could have the scriptures and the word and thinking again about all the missionary martyrs that's one of the things where if you ever go to this album by this duo called David Scott where there is this album they have called Share the Lamb and there's a song on there called This Blood's For You and it tells us all about those who died and all the people and countries they went to to spread the word and all the persecutions they faced. Think about how it was back in old ancient Rome when Nero was still the emperor all the believers he tossed to the lions and stuff and 
all the little ways they worshiped Caesar in those days, I say, because Caesars were always emperors of Rome, and there were lots of them out there who kind of had different ways about things and different knowledge, you know, and so I come on today, share little words that y'all don't see, y'all don't hear, not never, and I say, I say that it's like how they say that people died to give us the right to vote, and whether we were vote Democrat or Republican or Independent, it doesn't matter. But these are just among the things that I say our American Revolution was all about. And all the freedom we get. And how, you know, there's that old saying, that old song, proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. Won't forget the men who died who give that right to me. They were all soldiers, you know. They were all soldiers who died in the war to make you free. Sorry if you got a little exposure there, but that was kind of all I knew to get the chips off my shirt. I say, I say that one day it's like I'll find myself a little carbon apron one day and kind of put it on to kind of gather up all these chips that kind of fall in strange awkward places you know I tell y'all that this is just and the safety police to come by to make sure you're wearing your glove just makes it that little cut happen so I say that there's one little step or two to take along and maybe just maybe make this video about a little longer like the last kind of come along to take care of the one little panel of Joseph here from the genuine mahogany and Sometimes, sometimes, I tell y'all, I think about the Liberty Tree. What I learned was that it was an old elm tree. To that matter, I'd say there's a guitar shop here in Lexington called Will Cut Guitar Shop. I don't really bring guitars out as much as I used to and play them anymore, but there has been a time I was in there and they had a guitar there in the store that was made from the wood of the Liberty Tree. Some of those guitars, you were allowed to pick them up and play with them, but that particular one, you had to ask assistance with because it was considered valuable. It was made from the wood of the Liberty Tree, and so they kind of had to preserve it because it would be very high priced for what you knew. It was kind of like our little national tree and like all these things about bald eagles our national emblem you know i got a book at christmas a year ago that was a little book about how to carve birds of prey and there was a little pattern for a bald eagle in there i kind of looked it up saw it and liked it one of these days i'm thinking i might consider getting it out and trying to carve it and just to kind of see what it does, see how it goes. Might like doing it if I try to do it, so have yet to see how that's going to be, how that might turn out, so it's like these days, you know, you find out what sells and that's what you market. I'm sure that bald eagles might be is something people would buy as they represent our nation and our national emblem because they're like the bird of America you see and I say for all times 
come on here to say more. We'll have more to share as we move a little bit further along. Some things will be over with sooner or later. And all things I say, little revolutionary wars shall take place. And in different countries, they have it different ways. And sometimes, even like the time when America and our troops went over to Iraq to set the Iraqis free from Saddam Hussein, their horrible leader and dictator at the time. And... Of all things, I say, we've got different days to celebrate on our calendar, to observe different things. Probably had as much patriotic things to share here as I wanted to say. You will notice that I carved a little Uncle Sam Santa out of a book called Carving Santas from Around the World. That has become the thumbnail for the videos of this series. And what I wanted to share is that that's an important carving because it's kind of patriotic and one that I often use to symbol patriotism. And I'd say, I say that it's like there's going to be more to share with the memes that come with it that come further along. Not much time to say much as it's getting about time to end, but of all things i appreciate how much you all come on here to watch this pray you all will always keep in touch take care stay safe and come back again thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video and if you haven't already please subscribe to this channel i hope to see you in the next video stay tuned